This is module two, slides 12 through 18, getting started on cleaning optics. In these learning outcomes are gonna describe the work table layout, different types of lighting, summarize the list of cleaning tools, and explain covering the hands, gloves, and cots. The work table. The work table, as I move the mouse across, basically is that you'll see that how it's laid out. And somewhat it is, in this picture, I'm trying to confine everything in here, but basically you can see what's laid out here is the type of lighting up here, uh, focus lighting here. You have dispensers of the different cleaning material. In this case, you've got canned air or dry air, whatever you want. Your cleaning tools, in this case, applicators. A brush for cleaning uh, services. This is a Camel Harris brush. And then here, as far as holding the optics basically on a table, is the, just a simple mouse pad or foam pad to protect the optic. Then, of course, you have your protection gloves. And also, you have a hand puffer here uh, to help just remove dust as, as you work with it. Generally, is you want to be, make sure the area is, is in a darkened uh, area. And as you can see here, the background here is dark. So that way there, it makes it easier to inspect just the optic and have nothing in the background of here. As always, you want to follow your company's policy on our economic procedures. And as you want to make sure that the table is set at the correct height and things are adequately, uh, are adequate at the position where you need them to, without overreaching. It should be comfortable and it should, should be accessible. And, then, and as always, the, pro the table should be set at the proper height. So you want to make sure that, that you're not leaning over something or raise your hands above it. Typically, you can set up a work table under a, a laminar flow bench. A laminar flow bench is basically takes uh, air within the room and discharges it across a clean table. Now, one of the things that you have to be aware of that a laminar flow bench needs to be uh, in a dust-free area. You know, as you don't want to put it in a dusty room. Uh, some people have, uh, I've heard that they actually put it into a dusty area hoping that it would clean up their air. You don't want to do that. You want to make sure that the, the flow bench is in, in an area that is not, not heavily, heavily dutch, uh, dusty. Um, and basically what happens is the filters get clogged up very quickly and those high maintenance costs wind up being the factor. Uh, it should be in a well-maintained low dust area. With the laminar flow bench, you basically have a coarse filter, uh, which is basically one that gets replaced every uh, once a month or so. Then you have a medium filter, that, which is internally inside. And then you have the final HEPA filter, which cleans up the air even more. Uh, one thing you have to be aware of, the fact that when a laminar flow bench with the air moving across, it will produce a static charge. So you have to be careful of the fact that you're either gonna, may have to ground yourself or the optic as you're working on it uh, to prevent any uh, particular uh, particles or dust and things like that and sticking to the optical surfaces. Lighting. Lighting selection depends on what, uh, depends on what on the element, the uh, optical system that needs to be cleaned. There are several types of lighting. There is diffused lighting, there's focus lighting, there's high, low power or high power intensity lighting, and there's fiber optic lighting. Uh, basically, with, depending on what kind of lighting you use, uh, fingerprints and stains will show up as discolored smudges uh, on an uncoated or coated surfaces, and typically dust and lint and other fibers will appear white or dark. And we'll describe the lighting in the, ne in the next slide. Lighting types. Typically, a diffused standard light source is a 40-watt bulb. Um, those have been pretty used for scratch and dig requirements, things like that. However, what's happening within the industry, a lot, of, a lot of these bulbs are being replaced by other types of lighting. Uh, one of those is a diffused, what is called a 15 watt fluorescent light bulb. And these are the ones that you can set up on your table. They're typically just a desk type lighting. And then there's the focused filament, which is basically, it's a high intensity light source, a microscope uh, illuminator that has a lens on it that allows you to focus the filament onto the optical surface. LED lighting. Now that's something that's new. Uh, it's up and coming. Uh, that's kind of replacing some of these light sources. Uh, more and more people are starting to do it. However, it's new, being new, that needs some development. Um, another type of lighting is called side lighting. Now what this is what basically is you're taking either a fiber optic light source or the focused light source and actually projecting it onto the side of the optic. 
And what that does is it, it makes the optic uh, basically glow in such a manner that dusts and other particulates can show up even better in some cases, depending on what, on what you're looking for. Uh, flashlight, that's another method in which to use as far as lighting. Sometimes if you're in a situation uh, where you can't get access to, to your normal workstation lighting, you can bring a flashlight with you. Uh, use the LED is usually the best choice in which to use for temporary thing. And one thing I have found out recently is that a number of people have been using uh, laser pointers as a light source. Uh, I'm gonna, being a safety person and being a safety officer for some time uh, in regards to lasers, uh, I highly recommend that lasers are not used as a light source. Uh, regardless of the type of power or anything like that. It's just extreme uh, high uh, eye hazards, risks, possibility of damage to the optics. And the light beam typically is just too small and what happens is it just scatters the light around anyway. And it's just too bright to observe the contaminants. So you always want to review and follow your laser uh, safety guidelines at all times. Cleaning tools. And cleaning tools break down in into these components. You have compressed gas, basically what this means is dry nitrogen. These are tanks of, of dry nitrogen that you can purchase, and then you can adapt them with a pressure uh, and also with an anti-static brush. Canned air, that basically is just the, typically the air in which you can purchase, uh, used for computing screens and things like that. And anti-static, uh, typically with some cases you may actually have to put an anti-static nozzle on the, on the air hose in order to reduce the amount of, of static. Your tools are going to be applicators, are going to be your brushes, your tweezers, hemostat, etc. Wrapping, it's going to be tissues, envelopes, and containers. Personal protection equipment, that's going to be your gloves, your cots, your mask, and safety glasses. And the workstation is going to be the layout of your tools and dispensers. Soft brushes, what these are is basically um, brushes, the camel hair brush in this case, uh, using the mouse here, pointing at a camel's hair brush here and here. These are ones that are basically uh, are used uh, for a long time for uh, cleaning uh, negatives on uh, camera systems as well as cleaning lenses. And you have basically is the, this, this just a standard paintbrush which works well for very small optics. And then this one here shows that brush that's used uh, on the end of a carbon tip cleaner. Again, it's very similar to a camel's hair brush. Uh, it also is good for uh, using to uh, clean optics in the outdoors. And then here is just a big, what I would say just a hair, not a, a hair brush uh, that more looks like something for the Muppets than anything else. Um, that basically is good for large optics that allows you to clean things off uh, over large areas. Uh, this is something that's very similar, just buy it uh, at, a, at, at a dollar type store. Gloves and cots, and you have your various types of gloves here. You have basically is the uh, the larger latex type gloves, uh, and then you have your uh, what I call anti-static type gloves. That's the blue that you see here, and then you have your nylon uh, cloth gloves. That basically, uh, in some cases, uh, people have actually taken the nylon gloves and then put uh, latex gloves over it. And this is one way to reduce the amount of sweating that occurs when you're wearing these gloves because sweating is is one of these issues. If you're cleaning for long periods of time, unless it's really, really necessary, uh, I typically use finger cots. These are things, uh, the cots that are put over the fingers. It allows your hands to breathe during the cleaning process, and it makes it much more comfortable, especially if you're cleaning for long periods of time. And this concludes Module 2, Getting Started. As part of the video, I wanted to demonstrate a typical layout of a workstation and describe what's on the table that's typically used for, for cleaning optics. For demonstration purposes, this is somewhat condensed uh, table. Typically, it would have the equipment a little bit farther away. But it shows the various types of tools that are used during the cleaning process, the tweezers, the cleaning brushes, the dispensers, the typical applicators uh, that are used, the magnifiers, the marking pens, the different types of lighting, and the personal protection equipment. Here we have a wooden tweezer that's used for IR optics or for optics larger than, than the normal tweezers. You have the hemostat, a pre-sprung uh, sp uh, type tweezer, a uh, tweezers with the uh, heat shrink tubing already placed on them to protect the optics. 
And then you have the ASD type tweezer, which already has plastic tips on them, which are very good for handling objects to prevent uh, any chipping. Then you have your uh, cleaning brushes, which is the camel hair brushes. Here we have a drop type dispenser. You have an eyedropper dispenser, the pump action dispenser, which allows you to pump action the, the fluid into the well of the, uh, of the dispenser. The squeeze, so squeeze bottle, and then uh, a bottle that just basically has an enclosure. And then you have your canned air. The types of lighting that are located on the table is a fluorescent type lighting, which in this case is just a standard um, single tube. We have a high intensity or focused lighting, so that light in its, will focus down onto the surface of the optic. Then here are the various types of, 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 of eye loops. Um, these are a, a, high, a very high quality type eye loop. And then you have what is called the optician's eye loop, which is one you can purchase out of a catalog. And then you have the LED lighting, which is basically a simple LED light source that's come into play. Uh, and then all these types of LEDs that can be used as, as lighting. And then you have marking pens. You have your China marker, your permanent ink markers, and then your personal protection equipment. These would be your gloves, uh, your finger cuts, and, and your mask. The items located here on the pad, which are, are close to you, would be your tissue. In this case, you have a specialized optics tissue here. This is a folded tissue. Uh, you have the, uh, a, a knife, a sharp, uh, sharp knife here, your single edge razor blade, your microfiber uh, cloth, and the various types of cleaning applicators. And that would be your foam type, these would be your synthetic type, and this would be your cotton. As well as you've got the carbon tip cleaner with the little, with the little uh, brush on the end here.